game. Yeah, so it looks like Gold and Forever have probably started already. So we're probably going to see Drone and Yogg-Sothoth right now. Oh, Forever actually wants to resign. Okay. Well, anyway, we are going to watch Drone versus Yogg-Sothoth regardless. <laughs> so this is going to be semifinals. Winner's semis. On... I guess it's kind of confusing, actually, because it's... Well, it is Winter Semifinals. I'm not wrong. It's just... Yeah, that's right. It's Winter Semifinals. I don't know why Challenge does this. Challenge really doesn't quite name everything right. Yeah, it laid, it laid out the names of the rounds really strangely. It was confusing it's at like first. Semifinals? That's Winner's Finals. That's Loser's mm -hmm. Finals. That's Grand Finals. That's how everyone else calls it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, that aside, hmm. has the uh, room been created yet? I can't find it. We're in it. Oh. <laughs> well, we, we've been in it this whole time. Well done. Okay, so this is game one on. What map are we on? I think it's in. Oh, it's regular in Colta. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah, people are noticing about the volume. I'm trying to just I'm trying to figure out what to do here. So you're at 14-1 base. I'm at oh, that's why. Okay, that should work. I've I've increased Kane's volume a bit. So now now we should be even. Hello? Hope this sounds all right. A little bit ad hoc here. Yeah, I can't easily hear. That's the one problem. I can't easily hear it because I'm hearing right. your raw. Sure. All right. Sure so they'll let us know. They will. It's on Hitbox too, so that'll be fine. Yeah. Anyway, so next game is. Why is it taking forever? Okay, so, oh yeah, but for reference, just, just so everyone knows, I'm, as I've normally done in these tournaments, what I'll normally do in the single elim tournaments is I want to cast both semifinals, bronze match, and finals. For double elimination, I want to cast winner's finals, loser's finals, and then grand finals. That's all I care about. Everything else just comes down to whatever is convenient at the time. Those three are the only ones I care about. Conveniently, those three are also contingent on each other. The Windows Finals must end before the Losers Finals, before the Grand Finals. Uh, so don't worry about it. I am not going to be holding up the tournament for any arbitrary purpose. All games can be played in parallel in as much as they can be played in parallel because the results are known. So yeah, I'm not it's gone pretty quickly so far. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's what I want to see. So, All right. I think the levels should be about the same. Yeah, okay, good. Skazi's pointing out that the levels are fine, and I've also tested myself locally, so we are good. We're right just on. waiting on... Okay, an Anakin Beauty. and Snuggle Base, and you you forfeited against Snuggle Base, so Snuggle Base moves on to the Losers Round 3. Yes. Anakin and Google Frog, probably Google Frog to Losers Round 3 as well, so the loser of this winner semifinals, Group F, is going to be fighting against Snuggle Base. And then Golda and, well, I guess Forever is going to be fighting against Google Frog or Anarchalaw wins. Probably Google Frog, though. Don't mean to be rude, but it's probably going to be Google Frog. <laughs> sure. I don't think you would take any offense. Okay, Forever's actually needing to sub out. That's the thing. Yogg's oh, going to take about five minutes. So if you want to talk about other things. Let's, uh, well, I mean, do you want to talk predictions about uh, Drone Yogg's Sure. Any guesses? These guys were uh, partners in the 2v2 tournament, weren't they? Drone and Yogstoth? Or am I getting that mixed up? I believe you're right. They have been partners in the past, I believe. Mm, so how familiar do you think these guys are with each other's style? Do they play a lot together? Or I do don't know with that at all. Hand. Don't know? I haven't right. seen, I've seen a lot of drone games. I haven't necessarily seen a lot of drone Yogg games. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, I haven't seen Yogstoth very much in the 1v1 room, at least not in uh, recent months that I can remember. No, so Yogg's they are good, but they yeah, are... Yeah, no doubt. I... But are they beating Drone good? 
I guess I, is the question. Well, we'll find out. I yeah. kind of doubt it, though. But we'll see. Let's see. What was I gonna, oh, yeah, I wanted to check because I want to see if I could find games by Yogg because the best thing to do is to check the actual replay mm. list to see what games mm -hmm. have existed. That's a good idea. Okay, so while we're waiting, I'll go and show that cool image of the Rocco that I was mentioning on the stream. <laughs> because I mentioned it before, so I figure I should point it out again. I should also change the images that I use for the intermissions because, although this isn't an intermission right now, but I should change those images regardless because those are kind of old. Okay, so Yogg has actually not played... Oh, they played FFAs, but yeah, they haven't played a lot of 1v1s since the last... No, I haven't played mm. any 1v1s since before the last tournament. Oh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder how out of practice he may or may not be. I don't know. Uh, gonna be tough. I don't know. Well, on the other hand, Drone has been... I don't even know if I have to look this up. Drone's just been playing. Yeah, Drone's been playing pretty constantly. Oh, yeah, definitely. He just Every uh, recently day. slipped Every into, day. The, into the number one slot, didn't he? That's true. They did. Yep. Congratulations there. It looks like the game's just about to start then. We're loading up at yep. least. We are indeed. So where is... Okay, well, wait till that loads up before I switch over. But yeah, that's... That is basically how it goes. Drone has just been playing a lot. Yogstoth has not. But Yogstoth has been playing FFAs. So it's a different style? I mean... Uh, it's, it's totally... It's almost like a different game, if you ask okay, me. Okay, we're on Alien... Alien Desert, really? Okay, I thought we were on Inculta. But I was wrong. So, the one thing I think is going in... Drone's favor, right... Or Yogstoth's favor right now is the fact that... FFA is not bad for larger map situations. Especially if they get to high defense... If would, Drone does uh, pork up the way they have been before, mm -hmm. Yogg'Zoth will at least have a bit more practice in dealing with that. Uh, you know, that's an interesting point. Like, Yogg'Zoth might be better positioned, um, sort of defensive style. Like, if he porks up like we saw, Yogg'Zoth might be better positioned to dislodge him uh, compared to, say, how Google Frog tried to handle the same situation. Yeah, although I think Google Frog's probably just tired. <laughs> Gotta yeah, be that's honest. A good point. It's, I don't know what time, but I think it's late evening in Australia right now. Oh, yeah. Whereas in Europe, it's like noon. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's Google Frog is partly fatigue. Oh, I'm sure. Anyway, Drone is starting on the southwest side of the map, going for light vehicles, while Yogg'Zatoth, also light vehicles, another light vehicle mirror. Another LV mirror. Hmm. hmm. Well, this is definitely a different map than uh, Intersection. Should play out quite a bit differently. Well, Intersection... Especially... Intersection has the corners. <laughs> like, intersection has right. the hills, there's the ramps. Right. Bots can exactly. actually be more useful. And here, I feel like the mechs is more concentrated in the center. So we should see a lot more um, vine for center control. Although there was quite a bit of that last time on the last game on intersection. Yeah, I mean, this map, though, it's actually one where you can take the corners or the center. And I find most players will typically take the corners first. And then whoever takes the center typically wins. But holding the center is extremely tough. Yeah. And getting yeah, all so many of those mechs is. That's avenues just... to attack from, yeah. If you can hold that, you've already won, is basically how it goes. So typically players will take the mexes other than the center 10. Take the rest of the mexes, and then from there, we'll be able to basically play the game they want to play. Mm -hmm. Which does, of course, mean that porking up is hard to do. That's the thing with this map. Yeah. And coming in quickly, Yogstoth with a bit of harassment that does nothing. <laughs> it's a little bit gets of uh, Dart Wars there. Yeah, it gets information, but that's about it. Pretty good information, though. At the same time, Drone is in a much more powerful position. This Scorch is going to go around the back. Nothing's going to stop it. This metal extractor over the north side is dead. Definitely. Defender already wasting a missile, but it needed even more than just those three. Pretty That's aggressive all... worker in the center wow. here from Drone. It's uh, getting harassed by the start. Might actually go down to a little bit of inattention. Oh, yeah, it will. 20 seconds is nowhere near fast enough for that Lotus. Mm. But Drone, on the other hand... Wow, what are they... This Scorcher is not dying. Hero Scorcher? Yeah. Okay, I spoke too soon. That's quite a bit of damage, though. <laughs> it was a fair bit of damage, but I spoke too soon. Right as I said Hero Scorcher, it dies. But this is a heroic dart. <sighs> this one that just took out this worker. That was beautiful. Yep. And it's actually still there. It's just sort of sitting there and Hanging dying. out. Hey, uh, you guys see that uh, worker I uh, just scrapped? <laughs> it's like, hey, that worker. <laughs> Wait, was that a friend of yours? Oh, shit. <laughs> Pretty much the story of his life. Anyway, Yogg'Sdoth will be... 
Man, they are not really able to catch what Google, what Drone's doing. Just running in circles. Two darts now coming in from either side of the base into uh, Yogg's top position. Yeah, and Yogg <laughs> has radar too. Actually, oh no, Yogg has radar on the low ground. That's what a lot of the problem is. So there's uh, all yeah. this shadow that Drone can take advantage of. Yogg just lost one of the zone workers to uh, one of Drone's darts as well. Ah, uh, and of course these these extractors over here as well. Those those are both going to go down. Drone can take them out easily. Oh boy. Wow, Yogstoth is getting attacked on all fronts. This is not pretty. And Drone knows that they can get point. away with a center. And that's the mm -hmm. thing. Drone knows that Yogstoth is going to be spending all of their time and energy defending. That's they're right. not going to be harassing the center. They're not going to yep, be attacking. Well, they're, they're not just... wrong completely. And Yogstoth is harassing the center a bit, but not well enough. That Scorcher was nowhere near enough to Lotus to kill no. in time. Mm -hmm. Like Small control errors like that are going to make it possible for drone to get oh, and through. Drone is just running amok here. Look at that. It tore apart the entire eastern side of Yogg's space. They just pulls back. Probably going to head in As again after happens. that's rebuilt. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. And uh, Drone even replaced that worker that got taken out by the uh, dart earlier. And now he's just sort of creeping forward a little bit lazily. As long as he keeps Drone distracted and on the defensive here with these scorches in his base, he can do whatever he wants, really. Yeah, Yogg's does not really have any easy ways out of this. Because they have to be... Look at how many workers Drone has. I count five on the field for him right now. That's all but one of the workers on the field and total. <laughs> That's unbelievable to me. He has more workers than Scorchers, doesn't he? Or he has tied. more workers than Yogg's does the Scorchers, that's for sure. Yeah. He wow. does actually... No, he has more He has more Scorchers. But still, it's just... The fact that Yogg's hasn't built any static defense, and I know it's weird for me to say this, it's kind of hypocritical, but... This, <laughs> I've been learning. I've been learning to block. Sure. Yeah. No, but it's, it's a valid criticism here. Stack defense is what Yogg's needs, especially since Drone has demonstrated he has a bit of a, I guess, micro advantage, or at least he's been um, executing his raids better anyway. Yeah. So Yogg's really needs to be building stack defense to help compensate for that. I, I mean, it's just just a simple fact. Isn't probably it? also levelers too, but definitely mm -hmm. stack defenses. Stack defenses on top of Scorchers to counter raid to try to yeah. get back into this game, so it's not just being cornered and pressured and. Because basically at this point, Yogg's has been knocked in the corner and stuck there this entire time. Absolutely. They've just now broken free, but yep, the drone's already taken half the map. Yeah, four and a half minutes into the game, and Yogg's is still in this northeastern quadrant. I, I guess this really speaks to just how much of an advantage early momentum can give you. You know, it, yeah. was, it started with like a really light raid, you know, just a dark just, harass. Just a scorcher. And, just a scorcher yeah. in the north hitting that northern metal extractor. That was yep. the start. And the damage it dealt, the uh, amount of distraction it caused, really snowballed it, let Drone do basically whatever he wanted, like I said, go really greedy with a, a macro expansion like this. And Which actually, it only really happened because Yogg's their Scorcher was on the wrong side of the Lotus. They didn't pay attention and move it right up to the mm -hmm. Lotus to kill it quickly. If they True. had done that, then That's this right. Metal Extract would be dead, the Worker would be dead, the Center Expansions wouldn't be a thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, and absolutely. And at this point, Yogg's trying to make up for that. Trying to, getting rid of one of the Metal Extracts. Getting rid of the Worker here. got good. Got rid of the mason. Good pickoff, yep. Absolutely. And actually, oh, nice retreat marker, too. Gets rid of, I mean, it's six on one. They still managed to get rid of one of drones. Not bad at all. So that worked out decently well. But drone, not actually, they're they're not expanding naked anymore. They were. Mm. Actually, they never were. That's the thing. Drone has not been expanding naked. Yeah, it wasn't really naked. It was, it was just, uh, I guess, fast. <laughs> well, I think the thing is, I mentioned last game about how, or not last game, I mentioned in the game with Google Frog, which was the last game, on the intersection, that the whole idea of the triangle that players don't think about, I think sure. Drone's thinking about it. Mm. Because Drone has gone for... They've gone an expansion, but they've gone an expansion with enough defense that an attack, a counterattack, isn't going to do that much damage. Mm -hmm. So they haven't gone for an unsafe expansion, which would be the counter you'd use against a defending player. They've right. gone one step ahead. Knowing that they're going to get away with it. Like, they're going to get away with... They're going to build the expansion in time, whether or not they're naked. So they might as well go for the better defended one in case of counterattack. Yep, absolutely. Pretty large mass of slashers coming in here from Drone. You think this is uh, this, this is, is this finishing move? <laughs> sure, definitely. This is, this is more just flicking your head so you fall over. <laughs> put the nail in the coffin. Like... This is, yeah, yeah once with the that slash wall dead. gets set up, he'll be able to creep into the base. Plus, these Scorches in here are dealing a ton of damage. The scorches once they get nestled really in, be in behind the factory here, these Scorches up in Yogg's base could head over to the east right here. Oh, no, they'll be coming no, back out retreating. to the west. But if they headed over to the east, they could dig in behind that factory and pretty much end the game there. They could, but I don't think Drone feels the need to be that risky. Sure. There's no point. I mean, they have, they have a bunch of Slashes coming in. They have twice the economy. They might as well just attack directly and then... At the very least, they can distract out 
Yogg-Sothoth. Yeah. Because well, these Scorchers they, are barely alive anyway. Like they more than doubled Yogg-Sothoth's economy at this point, so Slow and Steady will win, win this race for Drone, almost certainly. Although sadly, all of those drone well, Drone's Scorchers were completely lost to the yogg Commander. Mm -hmm. That was a bit careless, but it, it doesn't really matter. I think Drone just doesn't care at this point because, well, they have the Slashers, they have the Levelers, they have the forces they need. And at this point, Yogg-Sothoth actually have a, has a slight window. It's a very, very small window. But there aren't any Scorchers anymore. There are yep, a ton of Masons, there are no Scorchers, there are some Slashers. A ton of workers being cranked out here from Drone. So, I mean, if there is a chance for Yogg-Sothoth, it's right now. Yeah, well, it's 1,200 Reclaim, though. That is on the table. That's why all those workers exist. Yeah, it's true. And then, yeah, of course, Yogg-Sothoth could, uh, could have used some workers himself. He has about 900 Metalson in his base. Still going to be unused so far. Well, some of it's being used. Five per second is being used. But yeah, the remaining 800 or so. Going to take well. And nice kills by the Scorchers. Unfortunately, not the best position. They can't really get around. This Scorcher needs to go back and be repaired. <laughs> That's the only way out of this. But yeah, there was very slight window. I mean, there is a bit more naked expansion going on. Drone is... I think it's... The thing is, is that Yogg's thought they had to come back with basically perfect play at this point. Yeah, this... I mean... Very, very tenacious Yogg-Sothoth here, but I think at this point the game's essentially over. Yeah, it's one of those things that's always a little bit tricky to work out is... The thing should is, I resign now? Yeah, should I resign now? Because on the one hand, you know, you might find the one avenue that gets you into the game. They yeah. snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. But on the other hand, if you've been that out... If you've been outplayed a lot, if it's like if it's something that, you know, you got kind of unlucky. You missed a couple good raids here and there. You missed a couple good points here and there. You might have... You should have made a good read here and you missed it. You know, stuff like that happens. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then yeah, you probably could come back because if you're relatively on par with your opponent, but in that one instance you just mess something up, you can make up for it. It's going to take a bit more work, but you could do it. If, on the other hand, your opponent outclasses you outright, which in this mm -hmm. case you point out there is a 400 LO spread, so that's a bit big. If your opponent does outclass you outright, if you don't get the momentum early on, it's you probably aren't going to be able to play more perfectly. This yeah. is a bit discouraging because at that point it's like, well, I've, I'm playing my best and I'm still getting outplayed. So unless you get the early momentum that forces your opponent to have to play harder than they need to on an even game, you've already put yourself in a very, very, very tight spot. Mm -hmm. Like coming back from behind if you're the weaker player is almost impossible. Almost unheard of, yeah. Anyway, this is the death blow a couple minutes later than expected, but. Still the death blow. And that's not even a there GG. Go. Oh boy. Not even a GG typed in. Just a surrender. That's all there is. A resign. And that is game one. So moving to game two with Yogg-Sothoth having their map choice. Well, it's like that can be, uh, well, pretty demoralizing. Oh, certainly. Especially get uh, just sort of hammered on right out the gate. There wasn't really any point there where Yogg-Sothoth even, even had much momentum, you know, to mount an attack against Drone. It, was, it just felt... Like a lot of domination there, so yeah. Like I said, there was that one window where, right when drone switched over from raiders to heavier units, that there might have been a chance, tiny chance, like this tiny little window that might have worked, that might have been wide enough to allow for yeah. for someone something to get through. But a very narrow window. <laughs> yeah, and I mean they couldn't have known. And the thing is, that's just something that it's hard to deal with because, like I said there was the heavily defended expansions. There's no easy way to just counter by attacking. Yep. And Yogg's not pointing out their APM disadvantage is showing. <laughs> yeah, there was a few in points of inattention. Yep, yep. Tough to keep up with everything. Anyway. So, I'm not sure what is going to go on. And it looks like... Check the bracket as well. Has anything changed in the bracket? Forever has... Well, they resigned against... Yeah, they seem to have resigned completely. I'm not totally sure. Also, Snuggle Base needs to move forward. I'm not sure... Does... Lowry knows that you've surrendered, right? That like you've resigned? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mentioned it to him. I saw a couple of other people mention it as well. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and send him a quick message. So, it looks like at this point, I really want to know if Anarchal and Google Frog have been playing it out. Because at this point, it looks like Snuggle Base and Google Frog will be fighting again in the losers round four.
So, we'll see. The map has not yet been chosen. Forever just sort of talking about stuff. I think... What are we going to see here? I mean, at this point, like I said, it'd be Snuggle Base and Google Frog once again. Whoever wins that will be in the Losers Finals. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we're going to have Golda and Drone. If Drone wins against the Oxitoth, Golda is already in the Winners Finals. Wow. Yeah, this has really gone quickly. Very quickly, yeah. Really surprised. I remember that was one of the concerns uh, with the double a double elimination bracket was that it would make the tournaments go way too long, but this has been really a uh, pretty quick procession. Yeah, I'm I'm quite pleased. I think we probably could have gotten away with having a best of three in the losers bracket. Yeah, because I, I think agree. that might. It seems like there's a lot of people surrendering once they get to losers, and that kind of makes sense because at that point it's like, well, best of one, how am I going to win against someone that good? Sure. But yeah, best of three probably would be a bit more encouraging. And I think we I have wonder... time. It's like, it's only been two hours. And we're oh, already wow. staring Yeah, we're already staring down the winner's finals. It's been two hours, and there's no best of five, so it's going to be... It could be fairly short if it's one-sided. Yep. And we're on banded planes. Yay! Beautiful. Love this map. I've made my love for this map in Trojan Hills very clear in the past. Mm. Really interesting map. I can't wait to see what factories they choose. I always have a hard time picking a factory here. Well, it feels a, like it works for all factories, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. So I many think good okay. Choices. Well, more so than Trojan Hills, it works for Air. Mm -hmm. like, Trojan Hills sort of works for Air, but Banded Plains you can go for an Air start and actually get away with it, especially in two v two. So oh, yeah. playing two v two, there's always an Air start player in this, usually in the center, usually in the mm -hmm. area protected by the ditch. Right. On one v one though, Cloaky. It's almost always cloaky that players go for. Mm -hmm. because the, yeah, the mobility, that makes sense. The mobility, and the fact is, there are a lot of ramps. Mm, yeah, so the ticks are very useful as well. Well, that too. I was meaning more that the vehicles don't have an easy way of getting up and down the ramps. Oh. They get slowed down. <laughs> so their speed yeah, advantage is nullified too. by the ramps. I've tried vehicles before, and it just... It always comes down to... If you can get to the center, it's okay. Right. But we getting sort of to the habit. center... Yeah, yeah, a bit tricky. If you and, start... Uh, I feel like you have less options for flank and getting into the back of the mm -hmm. base through these weird avenues there's lots of paths down the side of the map you know sneaking through the back into most of the base positions and i feel like that'd be harder to take advantage of yeah. with light vehicles actually there was a game that i casted that you played a couple weeks ago where you were on this map i can't remember who it was against i think it was against uh snuggle base if or maybe not the one a few weeks ago i don't recall i think it was against flipstep actually let's check oh, my youtube channel's taking forever to load it was against tansticker actually Oh, that's and right. And Tansticker built a bunch of defenses along the southwest side because they were on the south side. And they built all, all these defenses to attack along the most con circuitous route to get to their base. Yep, yep. That was pretty amusing. But we'll see. Yogstoth is in that south side. Drones in this north side, both going for Cloaky as expected. Because mm -hmm. Cloaky has, like, it's hilly enough that Cloaky can get away with not having to worry about vehicles dealing with it. And it's, it's, it's still fairly big, though. That's the one thing, but... So it tends to work you, fairly well. What do you think the logic is behind Yogzatoth's starting in the corner here versus starting in the center, which we see from Drone? I feel like there's a big trade-off there between the two starting positions. Maybe maybe going for well, there's actually easier three defensibility. Starting positions. Right, sure. There's yeah. the, the other starting position by the plus 1.8 max, which is extremely risky. The best starting mm. position, I think, if you're going for light vehicles, because you get you just avoid that ramp problem. Like mm. You don't have to go up the ramp to get out. You're already at the top. Super that risky, though. But right. if you can pull it off, then yeah, you actually have a great position. It's just that this, I think Yogstoth really wants to just focus on defense. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they have been playing FFAs recently. I'm guessing that they're thinking, well, I know how to pork up. Mm -hmm. I know how to pork up, take advantage of overdrive, and just generally put myself in a position that's almost impossible to break through. Interesting, yeah. That's the only that. thing I can think of. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I am conjecturing by far. <laughs> if Yogstoth says anything to the contrary, believe them. I am merely conjecturing. But sure. That seems like a reasonable conjecture given their history right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, however, Yogstoth not defending as much as I would expect they would. There's only no, one actually, defender in the wrong spot, too. Well, okay, really? not the totally wrong spot, but it's, an, it's a difficult spot to maintain. Mm. As the line of sight of the factory is being blocked, the defender cannot see past the factory. Does ah, manage that... Hits the factory! <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I mean. That's that factory. 
drone knows what they can get away with right now. Oh, nice. That 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 glaive has taken two hits from a defender and lived because of self healing. Ah, uh, yep. One thing I've actually wanted to try at some point, though it's really tricky to pull off, would be if you if you can get in and out of defender range. I'm not sure the defender's. I think the defender's actual range is longer than its target range, so I'm guessing it wouldn't work. Like just pop in and out of defender range. Oh, and so you then waste you can missiles. shoot the salvo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. You wouldn't be able to shoot know. the missiles, but I'm just saying if the missiles go out and then they miss from lack of fuel, but I don't think that would work. I think the missiles have a much longer range than their target. Like the targeting yeah. range, I believe, is like half or a third of the t total defender missile range or missile that makes lifetime. Sense. Sure. Just the amount of times they tend to circle around stuff and then lose their fuel. Check out this aggressive worker up to the northeast from Yogg's Trying to put a defender up here to stop, uh, looks like Drone's own worker there. It looks like it. I think what Yogg's is trying to do is defend the eastern side as best they can. They're also going for the south side. But it looks like what they're trying to do... They're... I think they're trying to get north to south on the eastern edge. Mm-hmm. Like, Interesting. As opposed that's to going east-west on the southern edge. Which huh. is what I would expect. It looks like that. Yeah, that's. Wow, that's a really aggressive play. I mean, it seems to be working out. It would explain the corner start. Or at least do something for that purpose. But I don't know how well that's going to work because Drone. Drone's got to be aware of this. No, Drone has no idea. Drone hmm. hasn't a clue. I mean, they'd find out maybe eventually, but they have no idea at the moment. They have no reason to look there either because there is nothing in the center, there's nothing in between. So their glaives that are going through the area in between where Yogstoth is currently expanding and Yogstoth's main base will um, not see that expansion. Well, Drone actually lost a worker up in the northeast to a couple of glaives from Yogstoth, so he yeah, should be aware that there was something over there. Yeah, but at the same time, that was just a raid. Mm -hmm. For all that Drone knows, that was just a raid that Yogstoth did along a probable expansion path. A probable yeah, unsafe expansion path. Drone Maybe going just... for a gunship as well, by the way. Oh, wow. Wow, this is early. Oh, yeah. Not four even four minutes plant. Hmm. So at the same time, Drone is set up here. Oh, what is it going to do? What are they going to do? So Drone... Yeah. Okay, they are going to spot it at some point. Because there's a worker that's going to set up along the northeast side. And Drone, mm. at the same time, coming in with the with the glaives. There isn't anything in the main base. Yogstoth's main base is open. There has not been any change in static oh, defense. Oh, Yogstoth's glaives are all over by Drone's base. This is, there's nothing here to defend this. There's no. three glaives, it looks like. All yeah, that, that can be that done... Worker's doomed. If Yogstoth can keep can get on track here, okay, they have a Lotus. I was about to say if they can get if they can get the defenses up in time, they'll have a chance. Oh man, because they have a decent attack force up front. They're getting rid of drones' forces pretty well, actually harassing nicely. If they can stop that worker over to the northeast, then that will be basically all they need. Lotus is up. The dr the glaives aren't in position to get rid of the Lotus yet, and that's actually nice. effective. Well defended by those uh, solar collectors there. Wow, yes, that is the solar collector wall clutch. in power. I mean, sorry, so power of the solar collector wall in action. Look at that. I didn't think that uh, Yogg was going to make it out of that one. And so that was a nice hold. And at nice the same hold. time, Yogg is attacking that north side exactly That's where right. I mentioned. Five seconds left before that Lotus is up. Four seconds. And is that going to be enough? Two seconds. One second. So that Lotus is up, but these glaives are in a position. If they can attack the Lotus directly, no, those glaives are going to die. Yogg oh, where are through. you? No, this is not the right call. Yogg is and... not paying attention to this area at all. Oh, man. Just now. Just Jeez. now popped into the area. Oh, that is painful. It could have stopped that worker. You do a lot of damage there, but uh, well, would have stopped I mean, the that's the way it goes. Stopped the, would have stopped the Lotus. Would have stopped everything. I mean, the glaives would have been a problem, yes, but at least it would have stopped the worker, so this area would have been safe. Now, hmm. once this worker goes to this metal extractor, these glaives are going to kill. Actually, once this radar is done, done. That's it. Drone yeah. knows they're there. Yep. Drone knows about this. Yogstoth's little hidden expansion attempt is no more. We're seeing However, Banshees out of this uh, gunship factory as well from the northwest. Looks well, like he's going to be using that to raid out. Yeah, against Kulky Boss, that makes sense. If you're going to sure. go for... It's you know, anti-light. Yeah, exactly. All the glaives that are out on the field right now. Interesting. One scythe up from uh, Yogg'sathoth so far. Might be his idea for a uh, turnaround. Well, at this uh, point, it's going to be tricky because Yogg'sathoth like, can't really defend against anything and Drone knows what's there. Yeah. And they're checking around as well just to make sure that there's no other expansions around. And there certainly are. And so Yogg'sath is set up so far, and scything a Banshee, huh. that apparently works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it works for the first shot anyway. Yeah, that's true. But Yogg'sath, like, uh, now they're forking up. Yeah, well, I mean, it looks like Drone's starting to um, put a bit of a soft contain in position here. You can see he has a few glaives strung across the east, a few down to the west, then Banshee's in the center in case he tries to move out that way. So 
feel like, uh, yeah, if Drone just sets up a good position here, you can just wait it out. How well, are you eastern, going? the eastern area is being broken, though. Those mm. glaives were a bit too thinly strung out. Mm -hmm. But these banshees coming in will clean up whatever was resisting there. Fair point. No gremlins yet. Oh, okay, a gremlin. That's sure. about it. Not going to do too much. Actually, <laughs> Not, half a dozen oh, gremlins. Whoa. Yeah, there we go. Just came out of the factory. And over from drone's side, we continue to see more and more... Oh, yeah, it's just conjurers coming here. Conjurers and banshees. So at this point, Drones is going to go for explosive expansion. There's no reason not to. Yogg sure. and Drone are actually even economically at this point, and almost yeah. even militarily. So it's really yeah. going to come down to how, the fact that Yogg doesn't have the position to easily expand. They are trying to. They are pushing out, going to the west side. So they're going to do the standard east to west on the south edge. They're north to south mm -hmm. on the east edge idea. While Clever, unfortunately, did not pan out. Like just one little bit of inattention over to the north. That Small little things like that, but they are important. But I feel like he had to take a big risk like that, you know, against a player like Drone. Definitely. Especially given the I disadvantage, agree. so can't slide him for that, but uh, actually, yeah, it just sort of fell apart. One thing I will say in Yogstot's favor on this one, just to avoid making it sound too cruel, the fact that they did that over to the northeast, as well as to the south, means that even though they did lose that expansion, they still did get some economy from it. They, they paid for itself, I'm pretty sure, by that point. And also, yeah, that's a good point. they kind of distracted Drone from attacking them directly, mm -hmm. while forcing Drone's focus on the northeast side of the map, which... Let's be honest, they don't care about that as much. Like, sure. Yogstoth has so much defenses on the south side of the map, it's clear what they value. Mm -hmm. And it's clear that that wasn't the northeast. The northeast was something they were trying to push, but they weren't really putting that much effort into it. They were, if they really were p worried about holding it, they would have taken everything from their main base to the northeast. Rather right. than taking just the north. Wow, explosive expansion indeed. I remember you remarked just a moment ago that uh, the economies were pretty much tied. Now drones nearly nearly doubled the Oxitoth already in his metal production. Yep, that's that's what happens. Because drone is the position, and they're going to convert that position into economy, and then convert that economy into military. Wow. That's that's the cycle of the game, is you get military you get to get position, to get economy, to get military, to get position, to get economy, and so forth. Yep. Yeah, I really love the way drone played this game out so far. Just once again, complete domination. Mm -hmm. And these glaives just, they're trying, but the gremlins, that's all they really have to get rid of the banshees. Short of uh, air switch, which Yogtoth has gone for, has not gone for swifts though. No swifts, no hawks. They have the gremlins, but the gremlins can only do so much. Which actually is quite a lot, so I, I am saying that facetiously because, <laughs> frankly, they just tore apart all these banshees at the cost of one of their number. So, yeah, that was actually really well done. Yeah, that worked out great. Perfect. Drone actually does have a military disadvantage, very slightly. Oh, and wow, look at that, yeah. Yeah, it's because, like I said about position, military, and economy, is that mm -hmm. economy leads into military, which means that if your opponent has military and you have economy, you're better off in a few minutes. But right now, your opponent actually has the advantage, and Yogg's realizing this, decides, well, screw it, I'm just going to take advantage of my current military advantage to try to see if I can break Drone's current economic advantage to stop mm -hmm. them from gaining a later military advantage, Thus solidifying my own advantage. Man, I hope and this works out. Win. Oh, we are seeing uh, Yagzatoth building up a few Swiss here as well. Okay, ready that's, to take out whatever that makes sense. Might, might no, be left over. Nothing from the Cloak about factor, though. They are totally focused on building up air. And that mm -hmm. Glaive, that needs to deal more damage. There's a lot of naked mexes right now. That's and right. not enough scouting to find them. Ah, uh, man, these Glaives are just sit, hanging out here in the middle of the map. They could be raiding around the edges. It's really what needs to happen, I think, yeah, for uh, Yagzatoth to bring this three back. Three Lotuses? Two or three Lotuses? Yeah. Half a dozen glaives could take that out without much sure. issue. And actually, with the Swiss as well, the Swiss could spread across the map to figure out, okay, where is Drone vulnerable? What can I attack? Because Drone still has the economic advantage. Yogg's not doing a great job getting rid of the Banshees, so at least keeping themselves in a good military position. And with Swifts too, no less. He's been creeping back economically as well. Um, he was uh, at just half of Drone's economy. Now he's at, what, two-thirds? Thereabout? Thereabouts, yeah. Reclaim Not will make all. that a bit tricky because the center reclaim is pretty open. And mm -hmm. how much reclaim is there? There's 800 metal in it. Actually, no, more than that. It's like 1,600 metal, about 600 each, I think, for each player, like in areas that they've claimed. Oh, no, no, never mind. Drone has pretty much all of it. So, yeah, yeah. Drone has 1,600 metal available to them on reclaim. That is dangerous. But at the same time, Ravens are coming in. So, Yogg's are converting. Out. They're converting air control to ground control. Getting in rid the of Zeus's. that. Uh, oh boy! Wow. Yeah, the, well, Myth. the Raven nerf. Air, air ball. 
Remember, so ravens are changed. They don't die yeah, anymore right. that much. And Yogstoth using their commander over the south. Good choice. The commander can easily tank this. Tearing that oh, apart. Wow. <laughs> so fully Beautiful. taking that south side. Unfortunately, not breaking that lotus. Yogstoth missing that. And Drone still has their worker there, but... Yogstoth remains in the back foot, and at this point, Drone, they have the tridents. They have air pretty much in the bag. Oof. Yeah, these tridents should uh, pretty much lock it down for Drone, right? Probably, yeah. Yogg-Soth commander in a pretty good position, and there aren't any rapiers or anything. There's no brawlers or rapiers or anything to deal with the ground directly. Hmm. So at this point, gremlins, if they're in position, they could deal with the tridents. Not too much issue. And more attempts on the ravens. Actually, the ravens... Oh, they do dive. Never mind. The ravens stop diving. I feel Stuck like the tridents are here mostly to support this uh, Zeus steamroller that's mounting here. We, there's uh, Which four on the field already. They need to, really. Yeah. Because those Zeuses would go down to ravens otherwise. If yeah, it weren't for the Tridents, this would mm -hmm. still be Yogg. Uh, have a much better position. Now, at this point, military is evened out. Drone, once again, at double the economy. They've continued their explosive expansion, despite Yogg's harassment attempts. But Yogg's has not stopped them. However, those aren't naked expansions. The center is, but the edges aren't. Drone's been playing a lot like that recently, actually. They've been, they've been defending the edges. Mm -hmm. So, if you can break the edges, but good luck breaking the edges. Yeah. That's basically been st the style they've been going for. And I think that is going to probably win them. And at this point, Yogstoth, I I don't see any easy way out of this. Yeah. They don't have any air support. They don't have any easy way to get rid of Zeus's. They don't have any Rockos, surprisingly, which would do and, the trick. Yep. And they're at uh, half economy, which is usually the uh, last nail in the coffin there. Well, half economy and reduced military. Mm -hmm. And like I said about the way that advantages work, well, if it's military and economy for one player, it's tough. Yep, not much, not much left to do. Other than go, try to go for some clutch raids and then hold out until your military beats theirs again. Looks like some brawlers coming in as well over the center of the map from drone. Should uh, wrap oh, yeah. this game up pretty quickly after this. Three, wow, that's yeah. And Yogg's that's commander at level three, but even then, been at level three for a while actually. Just about to uh, go down. It looks like here. Yep, that's that's gonna be game. Well, actually, no. Oh, wow. Well, the commander stays alive. I still think that there's HP. not much chance, though. I, yeah. still, I still stand I by my previous statement. That is still going to be game. Sure. These glaives over in the south, even if the commander doesn't die. Where the, where can the commander go? I can attack over from the west side, but that's about it. The glaives yeah, and Zeus have torn apart the south side. Southeast, that's the only area that has any control for Yogg-Sothoth. And the glaives really don't have much chance. Not against the brawler, at least. But yep, yeah, I have Yogg's, to agree with you. Yogg's commander's not dead, so there is that. Not dead yet? Yeah, what can you say? Well, it's irrelevant. <laughs> this stage <laughs> of the game. We're past about plus 25 metal, so it's irrelevant. And it's not in the center of the map, and it hasn't really attacked anything. I mean, it's, it is harassing a bit, but uh, it's five times the economy difference. So much of that being reclaimed in the center, too. Or probably is. Yeah, wait, no. No, what? Oh, wow. No, I am absolutely wrong. All of that is static economy. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's static economy that's giving that. Reclaim hasn't been taken. Oh, man. That is how lopsided this is. <laughs> Sheesh. Looks like this uh, pack of sides here is probably Drone's finishing move. Well, Once they get back here, take out the factory. Yeah. There's... Wow, ten sides? They've been mm -hmm. stockpiling. Yeah, but yeah, this, well, they've just this been uh, pouring in in a steady stream out of this cloaky bot factory. That's true, and yeah, Scuzzy pointing out that yeah, Yogg-Soth does have another chance. They have not been completely eliminated yet, because this is oh, double right. elimination. You know, I was wondering about that a little bit ago. I wonder if it's like an optimal strategy to get knocked out early on in the tournament and then just ride the losers bracket all the way up no. to the uh, nope, nope. Well, I was just thinking because it's best of one in the losers bracket, isn't it? is so i suppose you could try to focus on cheesing out your opponent in that one game but at the same time we don't even see players doing much cheese to begin with even the best of threes for game one to get an advantage i would like to say that i cheesed go to just uh you did you did you did a warrior rush i saw that one. Oh, oh, you didn't cast that one did you that I, was awful. i did it well, was at least brief. it was short don't worry about it I actually was mostly casting my technical issues of trying to get the win counter to be presenting the right <laughs> values because i didn't see the first game oh good because there's no chili text input 
Or mm. I think there isn't. I, don't, I can't see of anything that's like a window that you can open up that gives you text input as a box that you can do so you could set the wind count. Hey, uh, I'm going to hop off for just a minute. Uh, go get a bite to eat. I actually haven't eaten any breakfast this morning. So while this is wrapping up, I'm just going to go good. get some cereal. All right. I'll, uh, I'll mute my mic and then I'll come back when I'm done. Sounds good. All right. So All right. while Kane's eating breakfast, let's continue. Well, like, there's not much to continue to. Drone has basically lost everything. Oh, Anarchy, thank you. Okay, so cool. Apparently that there actually has been... There has been a text input chili box of some description added to 0k chili. That is wonderful. I probably won't be able to check it out until sometime, either maybe later today, maybe tomorrow. I'm not totally sure. The tournament's actually fairly short, so I think that getting the match, or so far it's been short. So I think getting the matches set up, like getting all the videos set up so that it's you know, on YouTube. I will have that probably by tomorrow. My tomorrow's going to be kind of busy, but I think I can get it tomorrow morning. And there it goes. That's it. Yogg-Zoth throws in the towel. Game 2 goes to Drone. But yeah, as I was saying, that's really cool. Because if I can get that, I can fix all the problems I have with trying to get this on-the-fly set up. Okay, so we have Drone and Gorda as the winner's finals. And then Yogg-Zoth... Oh, Yogg-Zoth against Snugglebase. Yeah, right. Snugglebase is not a free pass. <laughs> it's Yogg and Flass that are going to go at it. I totally forgot about that. So Yogg and Flaccid, they are going to be having a bit of a row, as it were.